Okay, yeah, welcome everybody. If you're here for the first time, welcome to Holberton School. Um, we're a community-driven software engineering school in San Francisco here. Um, and we train full-stack software engineers over the course of two years uh, with a peer learning and project-based methodology. So welcome. Um, we're very lucky today to have Guillaume Plessy um, to give us some insights around um, uh, monitoring solutions for uh, applications and servers. And um, uh, fortunately, uh, Guillaume has been involved in this kind of area for uh, since 1999, I guess, more or less. Since the last millennium. Yeah, yeah, so that's great. Um, he's also a maintainer of dot .dev, um, which is a uh, sort of a Debian distribution. I would explain. Okay, yeah, I'll go into it further. Um, and he's also involved in and a contributor of a number of open source projects. So if you're interested in open source, I'm sure he has some great insights. So uh, join me in welcoming Guillaume. Thank you. today about what I'm doing every day, the monitoring of a common web API platform that was, uh, what was uh, displayed on github.com, but my colleague asked to be more realistic. So monitoring of an awesome platform. So first, who am I? I'm Guillaume Plessy. Uh, I'm a VP infrastructure at, at uh, TextMe. That means I, I'm the system administrator, system architect uh, at this small company called Text me so uh, if uh, some of you don't know text me uh, some of my colleagues uh, met some talks here before uh, we are a company that publishes uh, applications so mobile applications on uh, iOS Android and a web application that allows you to uh, do sponsored communication so you can send messages SMS place calls receive calls we give you a real phone number and you have the same feature sets on uh, mobile phones and on the web app using WebRTC and some kind of uh, fancy API that you can find on modern browsers. Um, so I'm really involved for years uh, in uh, open source projects. So I decided at one point to backport some packages for uh, the Debian distribution. I put uh, all of this on .dev.org. Uh, so you can find some uh, tools like PHP, MySQL, Zebix, and that we will discuss. Uh, in this talk, uh, up-to-date versions for the state of distribution, and I'm on call as a system administrator since the last minute. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter, that's a fancy short uh, um, nickname, and she places uh, on Slack and Twitter uh, and uh, everything else. So, monitoring. What is it? Um, does um, anyone of you know what is uh, monitoring? Um, is it useful? Uh, did you ever deploy some monitoring tools before? Yeah? Who didn't? Mm -hmm. Nobody. Cool. Uh, so uh, monitoring, it's useful to basically track what is happening on the production system. Um, we, we want to collect metrics and know the status of every service we deploy on our, on our platform. Because uh, you can't just put your code into production and go into go, go, go off the grid and uh, say everything uh, will, will, will work perfectly. You have to monitor everything. So you, you can get the status and the metrics of your systems. Uh, when you get these metrics, it can be really useful for us humans to uh, visualize things, to know how um, the metrics evolve, a decrease, uh, an increase, a recurrent pattern, uh, daily, weekly, monthly, etc. etc. To analyze this, uh, if you have um, a problem on your platform or a performance degradation, um, you, you should be able to know uh, which metrics um, has a problem and uh, to diagnose the root cause of the, of the problem. And at one point, you you get alerted uh, when uh, something breaks on your platform. So I think that's already the case. You have a pager duty uh, app on your phone and you get alerts when uh, several reboots. Okay. Uh, and you 
can do this monitoring stuff on every layer of your application that starts from the hardware part. If you want to monitor, uh, for example, your motherboard, the CPU, the fans, the disk, and everything, you have different protocols on the hardware layer. Yeah, before you can do it on every layer of your application for uh, hardware part. Uh, if you want to monitor the motherboard, the fan, the CPU, the disk, you have different protocols. Uh, for HP, it's called uh, Ulet Packard I mean, it's called um, ILO, uh, you have a protocol called IPMI, you have Smart to monitor the disk status, so you have this kind of, uh, of protocols. For the network, that's basically switches and routers, you can access them using the simple network pro uh, protocol, it's SNMP, you also have SSH or Telnet. Uh, access to your uh, to your switches and routers uh, for the system depends. Uh, you can access it by SNMP. You have in every Linux distribution on Windows. You have the SNMP daemon uh, that um, answers some requests, so you can get metrics from the system. Uh, you can have uh, custom protocols depending on the. Uh, monitoring system that you use, we will see Nagios and Zavix uh, later, and you can access by SSH. Uh, for the application part, um, that means, uh, for example, you talked before about Flask uh, or Python, uh, you, you can use some, um, some custom stuff in, uh, in Python depending on uh, how you launch your process for your at text me we use whiskey there is one uh, stat module that um, where you can get metrics on your application uh, for uh, java application you have jmx uh, and so on on the client side you can also monitor if you have a native app you can uh, embed some sdks in, uh, in your application to track the uh, what happens uh, during the runtime if you get crashes and, uh, and so on on a web client, for example, you can get, uh, you can embed a JavaScript file that will get uh, some metrics, the DNS resolution time, the connection time to an API, uh, the DOM rendering, and the um, AJAX and JavaScript calls that you, that you make. And you can also monitor your, bu your business, your revenue, your <coughs> margins, uh, some fraud patterns, and so on. So, the goal of the monitoring is first, when we talk about system, uh, have the best availability uh, possible. So, uh, it's not 9,000, it's 5,9. Uh, uh, we usually um, measure the uh, availability in terms of 9. So, uh, I don't have my notes here. So, yeah. Um, the, the rule is to have at least five nights. That means uh, during a year, you will have only five minutes and 15 seconds of downtime. That's, that's much uh, downtime, actually. Uh, we usually, um, yeah, we, we usually uh, get four nights pretty easily. Uh, but then you can see that uh, the, the number of nine uh, is, uh, has a great influence on the availability of your platform. What you want is a, a platform available 24-7. So uh, we will put all the tools uh, in place to get, uh, to get so that your API is, uh, is always available. Um, it has some influence if, for example, your API is not private as a TextNet API that's public, for example, GitHub API, they have a status page with the response time, so uh, we are talking about performance, and if, it, if uh, the API is down, uh, we are talking about availability. Uh, if you have some partnership with an uh, enterprise, for example, you can get contracts with these enterprises, um, and you have to respect some service level, uh, level agreements, SLA, and uh, if your platform is done more than five minutes a year, you get penalties, so that's it. Uh, the monitoring can help uh, for everything about efficiency, okay, you provision some server, you have some CPU, some RAM, some disk, um, do you use them well? Um, 
is your how uh, are your machine uh, overloaded or not? Um, because uh, the more resources you provision, uh, the more uh, you will pay. So maybe sometimes you don't want to pay much for, for the same results. So we are talking about efficiency. And you can predict uh, what, uh, what you will need on your platform. It's uh, a matter of provisioning. Um, because your user base is growing, you, you will add uh, another million of users in the next month. How many machines will you need? Uh, by collecting metrics on your current, uh, current platform, you can predict that. And you can also uh, detect anomaly on your platform. So um, by, for example, uh, adding some uh, standard uh, behavior on your uh, users. I don't know if you, you've seen the latest uh, Silicon Valley episode, but uh, they detected some uh, fraudulent uh, users by uh, detecting anomaly on the platform. So uh, that's basically what we do. For example, text me has some fraud patterns. Uh, people getting uh, creating a lot of accounts and uh, getting a lot of numbers. That's something that we are able to to detect uh, thanks to the our monitoring system. So the monitoring will help you uh, answer these three questions. What happened on your platform? You, uh, you were uh, on a trip during the weekend and uh, coming back uh, to the office on Monday, your colleagues are <laughs> pretty pissed off because something broke on the platform and you didn't get uh, alerted. You should be able to uh, visualize the metric during the, the weekend and see what happened on the platform. And you should be able to diagnose what is happening right now. You get an alert and you have to um, be able to focus and to spot in a glimpse of an eye uh, what is wrong on the platform. Is the database down or slowing down? Uh, is your cache uh, out of control and everything? And uh, ideally, you will, you will be able to predict what will happen on your platform? Platform. When will you will you need um, a new server or a new uh, a new disk? Um, more storage, more CPU, and when? So the idea of the monitoring is that it's mandatory on the production system. Don't put anything in production without monitoring. So uh, to to help you have a pretty simple picture of, uh, of that. Um, I will show you our platform. It's pretty simple. It's more complex uh, in real life, but the idea is that we expose um, HTTPS endpoints um, publicly. It's, um, it's redirected to a load balancer, and that's everything uh, uh, under the load balancer is the, the platform. So. For every HTTPS request to the load balancer, the, um, this request gets routed to one of our front-end servers. So we have between uh, 8 and 40 servers, depending on the load on the platform. So uh, machines get uh, added or removed, depending on the CPU load on the, all these machines, uh, without any human intervention. We, uh, uh, everything is automatic. So uh, these front-end servers are running uh, the back-end code, that's Python, Django, and some push, uh, push system for Android and iOS. And we have our data sources, uh, databases. So we have a main database and a billing database. Every database is replicated with a, um, a read replica. Uh, and we also have a cache system. Uh, did you ever use a cache system such as Memcache or Redis? No, you know. uh, it's basically um, a key value system that is stored on the, on the memory of the ca cache machine. Uh, you access by a key and then you get the value. So for example, for your latest project, when you parse uh, the Wikipedia page and get all the links, uh, it's really slow to, to, to browse and to get all the links of a Wikipedia page because you have the HTTP request, the latency, and so on. So uh, what you will do is get this result once and store it in the memory of these machines. 
and invalidate it uh, when the Wikipedia page changes. Okay, so it's a more efficient way to access the, the data, but you have to be sure that um, the data is fresh and uh, um, good according to what's in the database. So that's pretty common for any web application or web API. So how will we monitor on this? We will use some tools. Um, Syslog, that's the, the name of um, uh, the log system that you can find on any Unix machine, so Linux, BSD. Uh, you also have it on Windows if you have a, a demon responsible for logging every event on the, on the machine. Uh, we will use Nagios, uh, we will use Dabix, so that's for the system part of the monitoring. We will use Sentry for the application part and New Relic as well. Uh, New Relic is an um, online service. I think that you are using it for your uh, applications on your servers. Uh, we're waiting for an update at their end, but then we'll be able to, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So uh, we are using some tools there, uh, not only the application monitoring, but some uh, API availability stuff. And uh, the fun part is pageology, and uh, the component that waits you up during the night. Mm -hmm. So first, syslog. So um, as, uh, as mentioned before, uh, every significant event on the platform, so on your system, on your routers, or uh, on your app, uh, goes into a text file, uh, basically one line per, per event. One event could be a HTTP request, for example. Uh, you, you, you already have deployed uh, uh, web servers, such as uh, Apache or Nginx, so you can get the access log. Every request is a line in the access log. Um, at Text.me, we are uh, doing this also for SMS server, MMS servers, uh, voice server. Um, we do it for applications, so uh, we can track some events in, a, in your code. Um, in Django, for example, you have a log warning or log debug, uh, different level, levels of log, um, and everything goes to a text file. So, but, um, uh, out of the box, everything goes into text files on your local machine, but because uh, our number of machines um, changes uh, depending on the load, the machine gets removed and you don't want to lose the logs, uh, what we do is uh, every machine forwards the log to uh, four central servers. Uh, we have one uh, syslog server um, that exposes a, a TCP port. Uh, to the rest of the platform and that gets uh, everything related to the TextMe API. We have another uh, syslog server for the VYP part and we have two servers for the analytics system. Um, because we have millions of users and uh, billions of events uh, on the platform, you can't put everything in one huge log file. Uh, you have one log file per uh, role and per hour, at takes me. Uh, every uh, file gets rotated on an hourly basis. Uh, it gets compressed and then we have an archiving, uh, archiving policy uh, that puts every uh, log file uh, on uh, Amazon S3 and this file gets, uh, gets moved to Amazon Glacier. Uh, it's a cold storage system uh, at the end of the month and uh, every log file is removed after one year. Uh, so we keep them for, for one year for uh, legal reasons. Um, Log files. They are useful when you want to investigate something that happened on your platform. So uh, at TextMe, our system is pretty simple and we are passing the logs when we need them. Okay. We, the logs are available and if we need to investigate one issue with one user and one, or one, uh, one piece of code, we pass the log. Uh, I, uh, I give Sylvain uh, An exercise on the log parsing. Uh, you, know, you, you have to parse uh, SMS server uh, logs to find some patterns and do rankings. That's usually what we do every day. If you want some more fancy uh, tools, you can 
you take a look at uh, the UK stash, it's a pretty common uh, stack today that's Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Uh, so basically, it's, it does the same thing as uh, Syslog. Logstash collects uh, log, the uh, Logstash clean them, filter them, and send them to Elastic uh, Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is better than plain text log, file, log files because it, um, it has indexes on the fields that you define uh, in your log files and then you are able to search uh, the log files more efficiently. So basically if you want all the HTTP requests coming from one IP address, it's, it's way, uh, way faster than uh, doing a pull up on uh, many log files. And Kibana is just uh, dashboard that you run in your browser and that queries uh, Elasticsearch. Uh, uh, you have some old projects called uh, Apache Flam. You have FreeMD and Grelog and um, the, um, the features just collecting logs and uh, having a nice web interface to, to search into the logs. Any questions? We use Nagios. So Nagios. Uh, it's from uh, Last Millennium as well. Uh, it's an open source software. Uh, the core of the software is open source, uh, but you also have a commercial license on it if you want some nice features. It's pretty common and simple. Uh, you can install it really easily on any Linux distribution. You just do apt get in uh, apt get uh, install Nagios server and Nagios frontend and Nagios plugins, and you get uh, everything running uh, without any. Uh, so the, um, how it works, uh, you get one server, the Nagio server, that gets the, the metrics directly from the different components of your platform. So it, use, uh, it uses uh, protocols uh, like SSH, SNMP, uh, it's basically scripts that it runs to get the metrics. And it stores the current status of, the pla of, the, of any metrics. Okay? And if uh, one metric uh, has a wrong status, warning, critical, or unknown, you get an alert. You can define that. Uh, you have a web interface for Nagios. It's I'll show you. Um, so um, at TextMe, we use uh, Nagios to monitor our load balancer. So let's see how it works. The configuration is just a text file. You define a host with an address, that's api.xmiad.com. Uh, you have a parent because it's uh, hosted on an AWS, so we define some uh, dependencies on uh, AWS. Uh, you have a check command, that's a dummy um, command because it always returns OK. Um, but for a regular host, not a load balancer, you could have a pin check, for example, to, uh, to check that uh, your server is um, available. And uh, in any case, uh, something goes, uh, goes wrong, you have to contact the text group uh, that is defined somewhere else in the configuration file. So the next step is to define a service. So we want to monitor the HTTPS endpoint. So you execute this command, check HTTPS URL with a parameter called mcheck. And if anything goes bad, you can type the technical. So the command is just a script that is executed on the Navio server. You check the HTTP with the SSL option uh, on the, the host address. So it will be api.textmeapp.com with the right header. You check the URL that was an argument, so I check, and you get a timeout of 20 seconds. So if the, if the API doesn't answer uh, HTTP 200 uh, return code uh, within uh, 20 seconds, we get an error. Okay. And uh, to define a group, just put the name and the different uh, email address that you want to contact. Okay. So, let's see how it looks. Nagios is pretty good. That's, that's a frame on the right. Uh, typical uh, in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you get this endpoint here that I've defined before. 
And uh, so that's the host, uh, text me app API load balancer, and then you get the service attached to it, HTTPS. You can get some details here. So it replies uh, with a HTTP 200 code, so everything is okay. And that's it. On our platform, we want to, to, to use uh, Navios on uh, some other components. The load balancer was pretty easy. Just one service on the, on the load balancer, but we want also to monitor our front-end front -end servers. So um, what we will do is monitor some layers on our uh, front-end servers, the hardware part and the storage, the OS uh, for the load average, the application server, making sure, for example, that the push uh, push notification daemon is running, and the web server, um, so uh, we check that the HTTP endpoints uh, respond to the, um, the request. So it's basically the same pattern as before. So you define your host, uh, it's a dummy host, and then uh, you define every service, so we, uh, we check the free space, the HTTP, the load average, the SMTP, because we have a new server running on every front end, and then you check the push server, that is called uh, GoCM. And uh, the command is basically a wrapper, uh, because um, we don't want to define this for every front end, in our platform, uh, we I just added a wrapper that lists the um, the running servers on our platform because uh, this uh, this number can change depending on the load on the platform. We don't want to define uh, a new host in Nagios and relaunch the Nagios daemon every time uh, a server is added or removed. So I have this um, this wrapper, and then uh, you execute these commands. That use here SNMP, here a HTTP request, just like we, we, we've seen before, and you define your uh, result where you want to have a warning or a critical error, and that's it. So uh, it looks like, like this, like this. You have the text me API, and then the free space. OCM, HTTP server, load average, and SMTP server. That's a basic check. You only check that your HTTP server is running. That's it. You don't get any metrics of the number of components users. Nagios uh, is pretty limited about that. It only stores the current status of the platform and it only has uh, four uh, return codes. Zero is for OK, one for warning. Uh, two for critical and three for unknown. So uh, that's it. You can't store any metrics, for example, the number of connected clients or anything out of the box. So, uh, like displayed here, it's limited. Uh, you don't get the history of your metrics, you can't have them. Uh, but you have some add-ons that you can plug on, uh, on Nagios to get graphs, to get the history of your metrics. But every every piece of software has its own uh, release cycle, and it can be really painful to integrate everything and to, to and get it working. So uh, what we did at TextMe, we chose another tool called Zabbix that does. Basically, that can do exactly the same thing as uh, Nagios, the same checks, but better, and can do also more stuff. Zavix is an open source software, and you can get commercial support for it. So if you want some um, custom development on Zavix, you can pay for it, and then uh, most of the time, these developments are merged into the open source branch of the Zabbix server. So uh, the way it works, if you have the Zabbix server that connects to uh, Zabbix agents, and the agents are installed on every machine, so the server apt-get installs Zabbix server, Zabbix frontend for the web interface, and on every machine, uh, you will uh, install the, the Zavix agent to get metrics and some detailed metrics about your um, about your servers. Uh, the, um, 
metrics are collected by the server and stored in a database. That's it. That's the first step of your monitoring system. And then these metrics, you can visualize them uh, on basic graphs or custom graphs, I will show you, and add this graph to dashboards. And the other part of the monitoring process is to uh, get notifications when something goes bad. So uh, in, in Zabbix, you can do pretty fancy stuff uh, like defining users that you put on different teams. For example, uh, text me, we have a QA uh, engineer uh, team, you have, you, you have, uh, we have a VOIP uh, engineer and we have an infrastructure, infrastructure engineer. So you can route every notification to any of this team. You have an escalation process, so if one team doesn't uh, acknowledge the, the program on the platform, you can escalate on another team. For example, if the, if the team number one uh, is out of the grid and can't uh, fix the problem, uh, after 20 minutes, you know, the team number two can, uh, can try to fix the problem. You have the maintenance period and also some extra in, uh, in Zabbix. Um, basically, the metrics that you collect, uh, every, you don't have to add them one by one on every host that you add to your Zabbix server. Uh, you get some templates for basically I have a, a template for Linux machines. Uh, I have a template for, um, that can add on top of the Linux machine regarding uh, HTTP servers, MySQL server, and different types of services that run on uh, every machine. And we have also some fancy stuff that we call low level discovery. Uh, so uh, you rely on one metric that, that is sent by the agent to uh, put some more metrics on your server. Basically, when you have one machine, you don't know how many interface you will have. Okay, so the agent is able to give you a um, JSON, JSON structure with a list of um, a network interface, and then Davix is able to put metrics for every of the discovered interface. That's uh, you can do the same for. Uh, uh, disk, for example, in one server, if you have one disk, uh, you get uh, four metrics, for example, two disk, uh, eight metrics, and automatically. I will show you how it works. And Davix has, um, has a good point uh, regarding uh, compared to NetJuice is that uh, when, you want, when you want to monitor a platform at scale, it's really easy to distribute the load uh, using different Zabbix server plugged on the same database or using proxies or even um, getting the, the agents active so, uh, the, so that agents are responsible to send metrics directly to the server without the server asking uh, the, the agent for, for the metrics. Okay. So let's see how it looks. It's not as ugly as Nagios, but it's a bit as well. Um, here's um, um, the dashboard of Zabbix. So you, you get some, uh, some good visualization on one of what happens on your platform. So you have uh, first different um, uh, severity levels uh, of what happens. You have you know, classified information warning, average. We have some average uh, events running on the texting platform with lack of memories on my SQL servers, but it's okay. And you also have uh, high, high problems. If we add high, uh, high severity problems right now, uh, I wouldn't hope to. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't try I'm trying to fix the system. So that's it. Uh, so on the configuration part, you define costs. Yeah, I, I have a list post with different items and then uh, so items are metrics and then triggers so that's triggers that uh, you can lead to notification you can have graphs and discovery so um, I talked about templates so let's take a look at the OS Linux template I have 45 items for every Linux machine. Let's take a look at them. 
The first one is, for example, the agent host name. We get the host name of the machine, so that um, we can, for example, if it changes, we can uh, define a trigger that say, hey, the machine, uh, has, uh, the name of the machine has changed. It's not normal. You have the ping, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, if your machine gets uh, unreachable, you can get triggers on it, and you have the, the name of the trigger here. So uh, it's um, defined as well in the in the template. Uh, I have the this one is fun. The uptime, the number of seconds uh, since your uh, server's last reboot. For example, on your uh, servers, uh, it's at OVH your server. Okay. Uh, if you have uh, the, your monitoring that uh, runs every five minutes, every five minutes to check that your server is running and that your server reboots within two minutes, you are not notified. Okay. Uh, there is a chance that you don't get notified and that the server runs well after the reboot. You don't have anything to do. What what? What you would want is to know that your server rebooted, so uh, you can check with this trigger that the uptime uh, change with a negative value. So if your server had uh, three days of uptime and it gets zero after the, re the reboot, the change is negative, you get an alert. And with the severity level of information. Okay, So we can apply this template to every uh, Linux machine that we have. We can take a look at the MySQL uh, template that gets something more um, accurate and more precise that we could have on Nagios. So the items are uh, metrics with a name and a key and values uh, that you can get. So it's basically metrics that you can get from the MySQL internals, the MySQL engine, so the number of uh, insert requests, uh, delete requests, update, select, and so on. So using these metrics, you can get custom graphs. For example, I have in the same template, the MySQL template, the number of comments here. So I define a graph with different lines. Uh, actually, it's a stacked uh, stack lines with different colors. So for every machine that we get, let's take a look at the machine called Sentry. Take a look at it. You have the IP address, the host name. Uh, it's monitored with an agent, but you could also define SNMP, GMX, um, IPMI. Uh, mentioned before for the hardware part, and you applied some templates. So the machine is uh, hosted on uh, Amazon EC2, it's a Linux machine, and it runs an HTTPS server, Nginx, Redis, and MySQL. So if we, and because we applied the MySQL server, we automa automatically have a graph here call MySQL commands and you get a fancy graph with everything that happened during for example the last day. The, de the design of that is not optimal. It stores everything, every every value of every metric of every machine in a MySQL database. It can be huge on a on a platform at scale. At scale. Uh, so, yeah, that's what happens on the, on, the, on this century machine. Uh, on the last day, you had seven requests per second uh, on average, and a top on, uh, of one hundred. So that's it. You have some other graphs that you define on the MySQL template and other templates. And these graphs, you can do, you can build screens with that to have a good overview of, of what's happening on your machine. So, so that's, let's take this one. That's what's happening on, uh, on the MySQL server, so it me. Do 
you already have uh, this kind of uh, detail monitoring in place, what do you use uh, on your on your servers? We have access to Wavefront, but we haven't done a whole lot with it yet. I don't know what from. What does it do? Uh, system monitoring? A lot of yeah. Okay. CPU, disk, uh, memory. Yeah. Okay. No, for example, if you run a MySQL server, just like you did for in your um, uh, uh, Wikipedia project, um, is uh, Wavefront able to monitor that? Uh, I don't think we've done specifically that yet. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. here I have a custom screen with our three uh, main MySQL server. You can see the number of selects, updates, inserts, the CPU load, the number of connections, depending on the, the time of the day. So it's here on one day, I can do it on uh, seven days, and so on. Uh, that's it. Um, I talked before, uh, one last thing about um, about the X on the templates, I talked about discovery. So if you take the Linux template, you have a discovery, for example, for the network interface. The Zadix agent installed on the, on the Linux machine is able to send you a, a special key called Net Interface Discovery. Uh, every hour, and then this key uh, contains uh, the, the name of uh, every user, uh, every network interface, and for every uh, network interface, you get four metrics: the number, uh, the number of uh, bits on the incoming uh, of incoming traffic, outgoing traffic, and the same for the packets. So you can get this uh, added automatically if you add one network interface to your uh, to your machine. It will be detected and you will have metrics without doing anything on the, on the Zapix uh, server. And if you remove one network interface, the data of the, the old network interface is kept uh, um, uh, during uh, the time frame that you define uh, on Zapix. So that's what Zapix is able to do. We also have one tool called, called Sentry. Um, it doesn't do uh, system monitoring, it's just a system, so it's a online uh, service. You can find it on uh, getsentry.com maybe. Uh, there is a company behind that, but uh, what they provide online as a paid service, they also publish it as a um, as an open source service, so you can get the code uh, running on your own uh, machines. So that's what we do, and basically Sentry gives you an HTTPS endpoint, and you can define some triggers and uh, logs in your application, for, for example in the Django application running on the backend, on the TextMe backend, we have a logging policy that sends every uh, exception happening in the code to the Sentry uh, tool. Um, so every event is grouped or filtered by type, by severity. You also have a basic alerting in Sentry. Um, you can get email notification, you can resolve um, uh, issues, and when the issue uh, happens again, you get a regression and you get an email as well. And it's really useful to see trends and track these regressions. I will show you what it looks like. So, Sentry. It's a bit more fancy than uh, Zabbix and Nuggets. So, you define an, organi an organization, text me, you define teams, we are one team, we take team, and you define project in it. So, uh, we have this main uh, API here that we use, and you get all the events, there are a lot. Uh, all the exceptions that you get on the platform. So, uh, and you get it real time. It uses a WebSocket and uh, Azure and everything. So, for example, uh, we have this event. It's only a warning. It's not a critical um, event, and it says that one IP address uh, didn't get uh, credits or any phone number because it tried it tried to create too many accounts a day on the platform. So you can have some details. You can have the trend for every event. So uh, here we have uh, 24 events an hour, and you can get some context. 
the IP address, what's your real name, and you can have also have features here, the server uh, where the exception did occur, you can have, I will try to find one, um, one more useful. Um, some calls on TextMe, mm -hmm. so uh, we block around uh, 100 calls, the OIP calls uh, per hour, and then you can have uh, some details. So, Sentry is really useful if you want to track what's happening in your application code, not on the system, not on the high-level part. Uh, the, you, you don't test your API uh, reachability, availability, or anything. You get notifications in a web interface the way that you would have in your uh, debugger on your uh, local development machine, but in a fancy way and uh, in a really useful way because of the grouping and uh, the number of events that you get um, uh, real time and other time. And that, uh, yeah. uh, we, can, uh, we can look into that in two, um, with more details after the talk. Okay. We also use Nuric. It does First, we use it for application performance monitoring. We put an app in production and then we want to know what is slow in the app, uh, what are the slow data sources. Um, we also use it for the system monitoring. We already have um, a full feature uh, system monitoring with Nagios and Zabbix, but we also use Neuralic on one machine. The problem with the Neuralic is that it can get uh, really expensive. So if you deploy your application on many servers, you have to know that um, the price of Neuralic is out, uh, without any uh, coupon, uh, 150 bucks uh, per server per month. So it can get really expensive, especially when you, when you have uh, more than uh, 40 servers like we do. So we only install uh, the new rate probes on, uh, on one machine and we get a sample of what happens on this machine. Uh, we use it for client monitoring sometimes, uh, what happens in the browser when we do some web development uh, outside of our API, and we use it also for global availability performance. Um, TextMe is deployed uh, for, uh, in every country uh, uh, on the planet, and we want to make sure that our API, that uh, the mobile clients and the web apps um, is using, is available uh, everywhere, okay. and with a good level of performance. So that's what uh, that's how we use Neuralic. I'll show you. Neuralic is here. It's fancy. Mm -hmm. So we use the application uh, performance monitoring. So uh, you can get metrics on a time frame up to three months. So for the last hour, that's what happened on the on the platform. That's a response time and you get uh, every detail, so the time spent in the Python code, on the MySQL database, on the memcache and Redis, so that's the cache part of the platform, and web external is different providers or API, external APIs that we use. So uh, you have uh, the list of transactions, so that's basically routes that we put on our Django framework. So for example, if I Take a look at the route uh, when you get messages uh, on TextMe. We spend the blue part is the code, the purple one is the, the, the time that we spend on memcache. Uh, cream is MySQL, uh, red is Redis. So if I take a look at this on 24 hours, you will see some, um, some peaks. Uh, and you can see just with the, by taking a look at, at this interface that something goes bad on the platform, for example. Uh, yeah, you see these two peaks here. 
and here. So that's a script running on the platform and doing a full scan on the Redis key. It locks the Redis database and it slows down the, 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 the whole backend. So we are able to, to see that. And you have also uh, vertical lines uh, corresponding to deployments that we do on the, on, the, on the platform. So you can have these lines and see how a new deployment, uh, a deploy the, the deployment of a new feature on your new piece of code can have uh, an influence on your, uh, on your performance. You also have the throughput. So we do on this route in particular uh, 317 requests per minute on one machine. We have 40 machines, and if you take all the transactions, you have exactly the same uh, the same metrics. It's pretty useful, and you can uh, yeah we have something like 2,600 um, requests per minute. And Neuralink has some fancy features. For example, we have one, um, one transaction here uh, that is just modifying uh, content of a user that took 75 uh, seconds to execute. You can have the trace and to see what happened on, the, on this particular transaction. So you have a summary here, a breakdown table with the functions that took time. The Python code that, uh, that took time, took time uh, almost 100%. And you can get the, tra the trace detail. So you will find everything that you put in your code here to see how something blocks or so where something is slow, uh, depending on the request that you that you do to MySQL and cache and everything. So it's um, pretty easy to install. Uh, for example, for a uh, Django application, you only have to do a pip, that's a package manager, uh, Python package manager, pip install Neuralic, and then plug it into your Django app to define your login policy and everything, and put some more codes, uh, log warning, log debug uh, lines uh, in your code, and get everything running, and to see what really happens in production. Pretty useful. Uh, I said that we are also using Neuralic for some monitoring uh, to use synthetics. We define some endpoints. So we have here uh, the HTTPS API. And so uh, let's take a look at the last uh, 24 hours. And you get uh, the matrix uh, of uh, different point of uh, points of presence in the world. Uh, you get the uh, latency, the response time. For so, for example, one of the worst uh, response time well, response time that we have on the planet is from Singapore. Uh, you, we have a good response time from the US and everything. So you can check that your API is available, and then you you find some stats of availability, the, the nines that, uh, that I talked about uh, at, the, at the beginning of the talk, okay? So yeah, I had some, uh, some screenshots of uh, these two pigs that I talked before this morning, and uh, it was especially Redis. So uh, the way it, uh, you, you, you put it in your code, in uh, your Python code, uh, you get your uh, usual uh, Python import here to get your application, you get Sentry here, and then you plug your application, you encapsulate it into Sentry, and then on the machine that runs New Relic, you encapsulate the Sentry object into the New Relic object using this um, this configuration file can be a bit tricky, but that's the way we plug it uh, into your into our code. So last part is page your duty. That uh, wakes you up. Uh, you can with page your duty you get notifications uh, by uh, push notifications in your app on your smartphone. But uh, when I travel abroad, I don't always have um, always have data, so I can get SMS or calls. Uh, with different secure, uh, severity levels, you can get only uh, the, um, uh, the warnings or just uh, informational um, 
notification. You can, in PageRoyalty, really define services and teams so that you can route the different alerts to different teams depending on the, of the nature of the program. You have on-call schedule, um, but if you're the only one that takes me uh, being on call 24 7, so it's not a feature that we use. You also have some analytics about the source of, the, of your notification and the time of the um, the day, for example, to, to, to have some good insights about what you should resolve to first to, to prevent any uh, abusive notification. And you, have, uh, you also have some integrations with the third party services, just um, like your uh, Datadog, maybe WebFront, I don't know. So that's how we use it. Uh, that's the uh, name dropping session. Uh, I presented some tools, but uh, you have some alternatives. Uh, Grafana is a, a nice graphing tool that you can plug, for example, on Davix, maybe on uh, maybe on Nagios. The um, you put you you send your metrics to Grafana, and it is able to display some real time dashboard with some uh, fancy graphs. Gamblia uh, is a old project, um, pretty much the same age as uh, Nagios, but it's uh, pretty pretty well deployed uh, at Twitter, Flickr, and uh, uh, like this. You have, if you want a fancy monitoring system uh, with an um, on bar uh, in terms of feature uh, as uh, Zabbix, you have Prometheus. It was basically um, developed and deployed at SoundCloud, and they open sourced it one year ago maybe. It's pretty active and you get a more modern design than any other uh, monitoring tool, open source tool that you have. Mm -hmm. It's open source, so take a look at it. Uh, you also have so Datadog and WebFront, that's online services that you can plug really easily uh, in your, on your system, and servers or applications. Uh, you also have maybe at OVH you, are, you have something like RTM, it's a real-time monitor that you get on every instance. You can get the network traffic, CPU usage, and everything. So basically, your hosting uh, company uh, will provide you some uh, some metrics as well. You can use them. We are deployed on uh, AWS, so we are using the built-in tool called uh, CloudWatch. I can show you later. Um, it gives you some metrics that you can aggregate. You can do the sun, the average, the max, the mean, and everything on every metric of every component on your platform. And last tool that I will talk about is Cell.city. It's basically the same feature set as um, PageRoyalty, but they introduced uh, some, uh, some more feature focused on the well-being of uh, Operation guys, uh, for example, uh, today they released uh, something like a fatigue factor, uh, depending on uh, the time of the day uh, when a notification uh, is received and uh, or often, they get this um, yeah, fatigue factor uh, that says um, receiving this alert was painful for the for the, the guys who were on the call. They, they got uh, Wake up and uh, something like that. So that's something that's really interesting if you want your operation guys not to get mad after one hour, uh, one, uh, one month of uh, on call. So to wrap up uh, everything that we deployed on, uh, on our platform, so that's the platform. We, uh, we use CloudWatch from AWS, like I said before, on every component on the platform. We get metrics automatically for load balancer instances. Uh, we also have logs on every component, every machine, like I said, uh, via syslog. We deployed Nagios. Uh, we, we took a look at the configuration file uh, on the load balancer on the front-end server. We deployed Zabbix uh, for to test the reachability of the load balancer and to to get some detailed metrics on every machine that are now that are not uh, front end servers. We deployed Sentry to get uh, application exceptions uh, centralized uh, in this web interface, and we also used Neuralink to test the reachability of la and latency of the API and to get metrics from the application. So here is another view that we that we have, and um, we deployed all of this, but 
we don't get notification for every of these tools. We only get notification from Nagios and Netflix on some uh, some uh, some metrics. Um, I didn't talk because I think we are running out of time, but uh, we also use Zabbix to monitor uh, some business metrics, the revenue margin, and some uh, fraud components. We also uh, inject some metrics about the reliability and performance of uh, our provider. For example, we interconnect with a VoIP provider to place calls, and for example, uh, for, our, for our destination, we have many carriers, uh, car uh, VoIP carriers carriers that, you can, that we can use, and for every carrier uh, using the low-level discovery of Zabbix, we get uh, the number of calls, the number of successful, uh, successful calls, and uh, the cost of these calls. So we can get uh, some triggers on that, uh, especially if we see some fraud pattern, a huge increase of the number of calls uh, without any pricing change, we are able to detect. So that's, uh, we get notification on this to, to, to prevent any loss of money uh, from the company. That's it, some pro tips. You have to monitor your, monitor your monitoring. For example, I have one Zabbix server, and if it gets unavailable, I don't know. Okay? I don't get any metrics or any notifications. So my Nagio server is monitoring the Zabbix server. The Linux server is monitoring the Nagio server. Um, when we are talking about notifications and uh, application deployments, um, avoid DevOps. You know DevOps? Uh, avoid DevOps. DevOps is basically when uh, your developers are deploying something in production. Say, I go into, uh, I go, uh, I'm off, uh, uh, and that's it. That's that's the ops problem. So um, what you could do um, in terms of organization in your team is just involve uh, your developers in the um, on-call system so that they get notification when something goes bad or when they put something wrong into production. Get them involved. It's pretty important. You, as a system administrator, you don't have to fix everything. They also have to. And you also have to avoid fatigue. Um, so don't hesitate to deploy auto repair system on your system uh, on your uh, servers. Um, if you um, you can have local watchdogs like Monit, for example, APT gate is that Monit. You uh, you you test that the port uh, port 80 of your web server is reachable. If it's not, the machine is able to relaunch your web server. It avoids you. To prevents you to, to, to be waking up during the night and the machine uh, fix, uh, fixes itself automatically. Uh, you can play with severity levels in every monitoring tool, so you only get critical uh, notifications, not warnings. You can define dependencies, so if I know that AWS is there, for example, uh, don't send me any notification for every machine that I, that I have AWS. That's a lot of notification at the same time. You only get notifications for AWS being down and that's it. You focus on this, you don't get a shift of notification. Uh, you, can, you can also define teams and escalation policies and you can, uh, you can also use a prediction system. Zabbix in its latest version and as a prediction so it can give you some um, insights about when to add uh, this space, or when to scale up your machine, your machine to have more CPU or RAM, and I think that uh, Sigma deployed something like that and built in um, a monitoring system that is able to to predict what will uh, go on, what will go on on, uh, on the platform. That's it. It was long and painful, <laughs> but um, but yeah. Um, just to, to wrap up everything. Um, monitoring is really important and um, you getting notification can be really painful, especially during the night, but that's important for your company, uh, for your business and everything. You can make things easier, but um, yeah, let's try to focus on the, on the fatigue and uh, make sure that you 
of the Russian guys um, at uh, Tire at the end of the, uh, of the day. Okay. So uh, yeah, this uh, XKCD uh, comics um, illustrates uh, the ocean that some uh, system have. Uh, so uh, let me to read about that. So okay. if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I had a question about just sort of the, the nine numbers or the multiple nines, but uh, like, what is in your experience? What is maybe like the top cause of a um, of a problem that you know shuts down the server and then wakes you up in the middle of the night? If you're already confident with your um, applications and your platform components in terms of software because you tested them before, most of your problems will come from external um, external factors just like your provider or hardware okay so um, one thing that that has an influence on uh, uh, the monitoring is the Murphy's law so <coughs> if, uh, if anything might go, go wrong it will okay so uh, if, if, if anything can break it will and um, nothing is um, uh, reliable 100%. So what I see from my, from my experience is basically infrastructure and hardware parts of the most uh, fragile. Yeah. Thanks. So I know you guys work in telecommunications, sort of telecommunications field. How much of your, the decisions you make in terms of how strictly you monitor stuff comes as a requirement to, you know, log things um, from, from sort of government regulation? We have some uh, legal oblig uh, obligation, so um, we keep some, um, we keep a trace of every user activity uh, with some, uh, I'm sorry, I think you lost your mic. So, uh, yeah, uh, we keep, we don't keep the content of uh, every communication for a privacy concern, but we keep uh, a trace of the, uh, the activity. So, um, for legal reason, but also for service improvement reason. So, uh, when I talked about logs, log servers, I said that every event on the platform is um, is logged. So every time you send an SMS, you receive an SMS, you place a call or you receive a call or you do something on the, on the mobile app, you get an event, okay? And we keep some dimensions, the, the, the version of your, the application, your mobile carrier, some kind of stuff like this, so that we can track the quality of the service and yeah, track the quality of the providers and so on, depending on um, the shipper of factors. Okay, so it's essentially for quality of service and the reliability of the service, but we also use uh, the strict minimum of this data to reply to some um, yeah, legal requests called subpoena. We get, uh, we get some of them. And uh, yeah, uh, basically, our policy is to keep this, uh, this data for one year. We don't give any information more than one, one year. I was wondering how resource intensive all of these logging systems was. It looks like a lot of extra stuff to be putting on your servers. Yeah, but it's part of the of the production, so you have to forecast this uh, this overhead. Um, yeah, running a syslog server means a lot of I/O on your disk, uh, input output. Uh, and some more traffic overhead, so some more in, uh, interruptions on your uh, network interface, some load on the platform, but that's part of the job. So, and it's pretty light for, uh, it's pretty light compared to some other intensive stuff uh, such as uh, running an application. So we have dedicated machines for uh, logging with a, a disk with uh, the right specifications and uh, every machine, we know that it produces um, um, this amount of traffic, so we, we make sure that it doesn't um, uh, prevent the application to run, for example. Okay. 
um, let's say something like two, two percent of overhead in terms of CPU. You know? That's usually what we want to get. Thank you. I have one. Uh, so, of course, if you don't put any monitoring system, you are not alert of any problem. So it's perfect for the night. Uh, but the reverse, to put too many uh, different uh, software yeah, like that, uh, is not too much, or do you have some overlapping between data, and how do you compare them? We try, we, we try to avoid any duplicate uh, notification. It's not always uh, possible because we have many systems and they don't interact with each other but uh, for example if we only get a notification for one service from Zabbix we are able to to have dependencies to, to avoid duplicate uh, duplicate duplicated alerts and so on um, we could have some, some for example uh, alerts email notification from New Relic when the API is down but we are uh, is already doing the job so um, yeah our policy when we have to deploy new new probes new notifications is when it's possible to first get the metrics done but don't put any trigger on on them you see how the other metrics evolved during the time and then at what point you put the triggers with the right uh, result okay, that's how we do Question. Do you guys are ready to deploy uh, some of these, uh, these tools on your platform? <laughs> Let's talk about that because you, you just told us that you start to, uh, how can I say that, uh, to teach your developer to deploy in the right time to don't be disturbed during the night because if they deploy at 10 pm, of course they will break something. Uh, what will be for you the best practice uh, for a developer to to keep the DevOps and the sysadmin team uh, not wake up every time and not crazy? Um, test your code uh, <laughs> upstream <laughs> on, your, on your local machine. Um, don't hesitate, don't hesitate to, to ask your sysadmin to provide some test or staging environment uh, before to, 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 to test your code in real life conditions. Uh, before putting your code into production, okay? Um, you have some nice tools like Docker today to, to, to have something almost on par in terms of features and uh, interaction between components locally in your system. Uh, so do this and uh, give your developers uh, access to, to these tools. Uh, basically, the, the goal of DevOps is to, to erase the the difference between uh, developers and uh, variations. So, yeah, uh, if someone breaks uh, something, has to fix it with the help of others, but everyone has to be involved in this process. Okay. So, for a simple server that you're using um, to host the web server, like, what would you recommend? Um, like, how far would you go with the monitoring tools? Depends on the, on the how critical you are, is your service. Do you need like an SLA of 99.8 right now, or only 98? I don't know. It's not. It's not five nines. Okay. So if you want to to monitor the, just the reachability of your server. Uh, maybe you could use uh, New Relic. The free version allows you to use Synthetix and you put uh, your server as an endpoint in it. You get uh, the performance of every point of presence in the globe and you can get notification on that. And you get these uh, this stats automatically. You are, you, mm -hmm. You've seen the 99.9% um, uh, availability during the last month. Uh, it's uh, calculated. You have some uh, fancy interfaces to see where the problem and when the problem uh, happened. Uh, and yeah, try to try to deploy at least one uh, one basic monitoring system like Nagios, or if you're if you're brave because the learning curve is a uh, is a uh, it's pretty steep. 
uh, try to deploy the list of primitives and define your own templates and metrics, uh, everything that's relevant for your application. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe just uh, HTTP check of yeah. okay. so question. Any quick Thank you.